yourself. And I feel like even as a person, it doesn't matter if you're a celebrity, if you are a nine to five, if you're an entrepreneur, just people, you need to check in with yourself. You check in with your spouse, you done checked in with everybody else but yourself. <laughs> you are now listening, learning, and laughing with It's Me, Julian Scott.com presents Keep It 100 podcast. I want to kick the show off with before really diving in to some of the main stories is something that came out of, about the guys actually in, in the background of things. Um, it was said that like backstage, basically right before they went on to talk about uh, for, for Quavo to get his performance, they started fighting. They literally started fighting. So Offset apparently was supposed to come up on stage and be a part of the tribute. The Grammys actually invited him to do that. So to, to be a part of that moment, you know, they try and chase the views. And Quavo and him obviously still have some some bad blood behind uh, their separation as a group. There's contractual disputes. There's emotional things. But the thing about the story that really, really caught me personally was the, you know, it's, it's all speculation, right? There's no video footage. All of this is alleged. I do want to say that, right? So we're just giving you opinions, not facts on this particular thing. But they said that Quavo actually started the argument between the two, right? He said that, you know, he wasn't he wasn't happy about Offset being there. He is already a emotionally uh, tense moment. You're going up there to give a tribute to your dead nephew. And it's a lot of emotions, a lot of things going on. And they literally had to be pulled apart, uh, you know, allegedly, according to this, these articles in the back of the Grammys. <laughs> right. So I, I'm thinking about like. Like, yo, the very thing following kind of what happened in terms of takeoff's death is almost repeating itself a little differently right the death surrounded a, they was all hanging out in a situation they started rolling dice people got a little heated about the money and this and that quavo you can actually see in the videos so this isn't really a legend here but you know you can hear him yelling back and forth with another gentleman moments before um you know tragically bullets start ringing off and it it really makes me think and i kind of want to push to you guys like the importance of just like emotional intelligence right like i i for the life of me could not fathom and understand why you know taking it away from them at this point just in general people find uh themselves in these situations that obviously we are in hindsight say could be avoidable right and we think we learn the lessons like for me if i'm losing a loved one in an event I think I'm going to learn a lesson from that. But instead, we see at a moment that's so supposed to be about commemoration and celebration, we jumping back into the exact same behavior that led to the situation that we up here to talk about in the first place. Right. Like what what do you guys think about the, you know, the importance of emotional intelligence when it comes to how we conduct ourselves and. You know, some of the things that we we choose to champion as a culture that may even um, sort of trick us or, or lead us down a path to instead of growing in this area, being sort of stuck at level one. Emotional intelligence. It's very important. And I, I felt like it's a way of, not, like you said, avoiding the same mistake over and over uh, again. Um, I know for me, when it comes to business and emotional intelligence, Honestly, I learned not to take things so personal because <laughs> it's just business. It's like you can't take things so personal and understanding the sit and, and being in the situation. I think emotional intelligence is sometimes uh, you're too emotional about a situation when you don't need to be emotional about a situation. It's understanding when and when not to do that. I also feel like. So, like, in this situation, I feel like it was set up for failure on part of the Grammys, right? If their intent was to bring um, Offset on stage to be a part of this, my question would be, what was the communication beforehand? Like, this altercation should have never got to the point behind the stage before he got on. Um, mm -hmm. If there was some kind of line of communication, knowing that realistically, you know, yes, they're family, they're group members, uh, but there's still some trauma on both sides that they have yet to um, probably work out. Well, clearly they haven't worked it out if they rumored to have gotten into a tussle um, behind the stage. I feel as though when it comes to emotional intelligence, 
Yeah, you can take business personal, but at the same time, business is kind of personal. You have to know your audience. You have to know who you're dealing with and how to navigate uh, that situation or just the people in general in order to see success at the end. Um, like I said, I feel like the Grammy set this up for failure. This, If this would have went completely left, this could have been a whole nother like Will Smith, Chris Rock type of situation. Oh, um, just in her bigger scale. Um, <laughs> no, but I'm serious, though. Like, what if they really would have gotten into a fist fight? Two they men, did behind a hit scene. <laughs> but like, what if it would have dragged on the stage? Like two men full of anger, both upset Black men. each other. Exactly. Both upset, lost family members, have yet to work it out. Like your emotions come out and they come out at the worst moment. I can only imagine the feeling of thousands of people watching you, millions really. And you guys are heated at each other. Like you're going to say and do things that in the right mind and situation you would never do. Um, so like emotional thing. intelligence, like you, like it's it's up there. You gotta learn how to read the room. You gotta know who you're dealing with at all times. Right. That's the only thing I can say. Like having lost a, a member of your family, like to maintain emotions in those kind of situations, I would I would probably say are very difficult. Like you know, as speaking from somebody who I feel like have relatively mastered emotions, because when you talk about business. Business is relatively easy when it comes to managing emotions because as far as like business goes, when you talk about emotional intelligence, you have to be the most emotional intelligent, one, to know the other party, how they're thinking, to be able to negotiate business. So all of these things in the business world, I think, are first nature. But when it comes to like bringing that into personal life is where because it's kind of uh, in like enhanced by all of the money that may come behind it, but this is really an emotional response, especially in that setting. Like, I can't blame it on the Grammys for real. I would say I'm surprised that there was no communication or not even like, yeah, you both are going to be presenting this award, and you know, you just left it up to them to kind of figure it out. But in in most situations, you know, between life and business. If you're talking about people who are re uh, responding like negatively in an emotional setting, especially in business, in those kind of you know scenarios, especially like celebrities, I think is some some level of you know toxic masculinity. Like you know maybe with, to Julian's point, you know in the black community, like you're not a man if you're not able to stand up for yourself or shut something down if um, you know somebody not respecting you. So, bro, I, I want to stay right there, right? Because, and I do got a question before I got a question. So, Stanley, you said it's you think it's the Grammys' fault, yeah. And I'm trying to get off of them, but like you, you said it's the Grammys' fault that it was put together like that. Like you almost feel like they may have known or didn't do some due diligence, and you know things happen. They grown men. I'm on, I'm not blaming the Grammy. I, they I get grown it. Like we're, men. I get it. We're grown men. We Thank take you. accountability for our actions and what we do and don't do. But in my mind, if I'm the Grammys and I want these two to present or perform at the same time, knowing what has happened within the last six months or so, like, I'm, I'm going to do my research. I'm going to ask, like, hey, like, I want so-and-so to come on stage with you. How do you feel about that? Is this a deal breaker? Yes or no? Like, those are conversations and questions you have to ask. And that it is kind surprising. of feels like it's one of those situations where like, hey, Offset, by the way, man, you, you going up. Just want to let you know. Yeah, Quavo, he already knows about it. And then Quay was like, yo, what are you talking about? Like, this is mine. Like, you're not coming on. Like, that's kind of how it played out to me based on, like, the articles I read and, you know, some watching some of the videos. Like, I feel like that line of communication, like, just wasn't there. So you don't like think said, two things could be true? What do you that's mean? Crazy. You don't think two things could be true, right? Like, I I'm rocking with Danisha, man. Like, they grown as men. They grown men. Grown <laughs> as men. Okay. You're right. They grown. Like, they did the right thing. They said, you're going to sit your tail down behind I stage think, and not come on the stage with me while I rock this show real quick. It's just not happening. Like, I, right, but, all, but all due respect, said, like, I give those guys full-blown respect for that. Because that that incident, if it is true, could have unfolded and could have been nasty. Which would have been great for views. Don't get me wrong. I, but for I'm, the culture, it would have been nasty. Like, they... They could have played you, out their lyrics if they respect. wanted to. They need to cook this, man. <laughs> I was, no, I was going to say, I understand Stan's perspective regarding that. And going back to both are true. 
Now, at the end of the day, these are grown men. I can't cut, so grown amen. You know, put the word right there for me. Right, right. They grown men. And See, matter of fact, they are algorithm right now. They are businessmen too. Like they know mm -hmm. right from wrong. They know business on the behind the scenes. Like these ain't new folks that's just getting into the industry. They've been around for a minute, so they already know the game. Matter of fact, I'm sh I don't know if they've done an, a, a a Grammy before that type of performance, but they've done it on that large scale before, so they already know how to act. So yes, I agree that the the Grammys could have done something to help minimize the situation. However, so right. they are still grown a men, and they're gonna make their own decisions, so and they need to do some self healing. That whole family, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> therapy. <laughs> oh, they Go ahead, Miss Ayana, fix my <laughs> life, all right? Right. They need therapy. They, they, what this sound like is family drama that got on the stage, and this family drama needs some family therapy. That's all that is. They need to go okay. do something. Do you think life. the Grammys would have done this if this was the Beatles? Yes. I don't think so. I think they would have been taking more care. As in, what regard? Also, Hold on. As in what regard? As one is having more, them both on than, stage or more open lines of communication and I expectations have, around what's going to happen, why it's going to happen, and how you guys are going to interact with each other. Coordination. I, I mean, it's multiple people. Let's say it was just three of the four, you know, and they would have been like, okay, you know, Roscoe, I, I, don't, I don't know their names. <laughs> I, I don't know the video's name. I just know my man MJ owns half that catalog. Well, look, off of them, off of them, know. right? Like to, to Jordan's point. So if they just bring in any other people up or whatever, right? Or just in general, you got two people in a whole nother situation where you, you, you having a business meeting, but you know that you're trying to partner with two separate entities that may not actually rock with each other for whatever reasons. But you bring in uh, a head of marketing from one place and then somebody from, uh, you know, operations or something like that from, from another company. You need them to gel together to get get this deal done they don't necessarily rock with each other i get it i you we can have some messaging to say hey these people are going to be there blah 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 but at the end of the day right like to denisha's point like these are businessmen right so I, we have to put some accountability on ourselves on our actions on our behaviors and how we choose to do things like i think that is what's severely lacking. I, I I did see commentary similar to what Stanley was saying. Is like, man, I can't believe the Grammys did that. But like, when do we as people, and more importantly as black men, like denounce some of these things? Like, it's it's wicked ways, bro. Like, how in the world can we try to say, oh, well, you put me in a situation, so I'm gonna act like what you think I should be acting like? No, we need to have some uh, larger sense of self, right? The emotional intelligence, high IQ, uh, EQ, excuse me, to understand, like, all right, I am in this situation, but there's a bigger purpose here. Now, instead of people talking about the importance of the tribute that happened and the life that was lost and all the other lives who they talked about, what's the story? The story is y'all was behind the stage and trying to fight with each other, right? It takes completely away from the focus of the main reason why we're here. So whether it be a business deal or a product launch, anytime there's controversy and drama, you know, it, it could be effective for messaging and marketing and getting eyeballs on you. But are they on you for the right thing? Does that translate to, to sales? Does that translate to bettering the business in that aspect? And, and honestly, I don't think so, right? And it really... It makes me think about uh, an article, yeah. actually. Okay. Hold on real quick. It, it makes me think about an article that I saw about um, traumatic bonds, right? And how people come together. And it seems like, you know, you think about even the stories we've been hearing about hip hop in 2022. I can't even count on, you know, two hands, like how many rappers, hip hop artists, or people just in the industry who look like us passed away because of some traumatic event and we do the same thing we put them on a t-shirt and we put them and we keep it moving we send our posts we put our rips up we hopes and prayers hopes and prayers and we keep it moving right but it it, it never seems to change anything and, and in this article it was talking about that right about um a traumatic bond or trauma bonding right which is an attachment form between two people who are unconsciously in a bond with uh each other based on a shared trauma right these two gentlemen in my mind are going through that same type of thing where we just seem to 
attract the worst from each other sometimes. And and I don't know what, like, how do we get around that? What, what types of steps and things do we need to do to like, to kind of end the, this, this cycle? Cause it's, it's, that's so I, it's, many it's not healthy. I was going to so say that's a lot, man. That's that's a because thing. <laughs> you, you're talking about not only are you talking about uh, an emotional response to a traumatic event. So the trauma bonding is there. People are in toxic relationships frequently and if you talk about the culture, you talk about somebody's upbringing, a lot of those things accommodate for us to be in those type of relationships because we have not come from places that are healthy just to start off with. Second part is them in their celebrity status. That is another part that we may not be acknowledging like, yeah, to a degree as a celebrity, there may be some responsibility, some kind of uh, I guess, oldness to whether the community that you came from or representation of people like, but if you were looking at, you know, somebody at their funeral, cause I've seen fights at funerals too. And so, you know, but these are just regular mortal people, not celebrities. They're like, Oh, they're just going through something. They're also still going through something because they're regular people as well. And so then on top of that as business. So yeah, we incorporate all these things and it becomes a very muddy and very mixed bag. So when you start to pull it apart and peel out layers, I agree to certain degrees on some of the things, but we still got to remember their people. Yeah, they should still carry responsibility, still kind of be able to hold their own and uh, seek the help. Their, sur their people surrounding them should assist them with finding out help. Like, y'all need to go see somebody. I need to talk to somebody, talk this through, because you shouldn't necessarily be taking it out on that person. But again, you also don't know their story. You don't know what happened behind the scenes if somebody is actually guilty of something, you know? And so it's all kind of accusations. So I think that there is too much that we can pass judgment on, but just to your point, just structurally, as black men, as leaders, as a celebrity, there are certain things that we would like to be able to see. And I would like to encourage anybody that's in that position of power to be able to say like, look, I understand what you're going through. I, you know, empathize and sympathize with you. But for the purposes of this instance, if you knew that you weren't going to be able or you had any kind of doubt that you were going to be able to keep your composure, then opt out. You know, yeah, I, maybe you want to show respect for, for your fam or the deceased or the loved one. But if you're doing that, then both of y'all should be able to go up there in, in accordance and be able to present the award and, you know, go about your separate ways because that's that's showing love to, uh, to offset. That sounds nice, right? <laughs> sound, sound nice, it sounds sounds nice. and I'm right. sure easier sounds, said than done but. sounds nice but I, I mean going back to what you said at, at the end of the day I think that people need to take the time to learn themselves and a lot of the trauma bond and a lot of the triggering situations that occur because you're going to always be triggered you know that's what happens when you explode and all the emotions come out in the fighting is because somebody said something somebody did something and you're triggered based off of an uh, experience that you had in the past. And so the best way to learn it, to really get through that process is to learn about yourself. Like, like you said, you could have been like, I don't know if this is going to work out or not. Um, if, if takeoff is there, I mean, offset is there, you know, I know how I feel about this. This is, I can tell that this is not going to fit well with me. You know, having that realistic conversation with yourself is important because those realistic conversations with yourself will help you avoid situations that you know that you can't handle right now. That situation just happened uh, where that family member passed away and you still have animosity or anger towards another family member. Let's be realistic about it. Have that conversation with yourself. So the, that way, when you do see that person, you're already knowing what to expect. Uh, you're already saying, hey, you know, this is I'm feeling negative about them. Let me let me take my space away from them. Yeah, we're in the same room, but all I can do is give you a hi. That's it. <laughs> like, hey. Hi, but anything outside of that, I, I can't give you like, and that's a real acknowledgement. And I, I believe that it's okay to be in that moment sometimes because you're being realistic about yourself. So you need to learn. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would definitely say the business part of me is like, yeah, you know, you got, you got the emotions bubbling up, but it's, I mean, negotiations are intense sometimes, but you still got to keep your composure. And so 
like y'all pay. And that might also be a, a contributing fact. Like I'm paid. Like you're not going to tell me nothing. I'm going to act whatever way that I feel. That's like you're talking about Jay-Z. Like he wears hair any way he wants to. I'm paid. Yeah, I'm paid. I hate, I hate that hair. <laughs> do you do you think we um we value ourselves? Uh what do who's we? Yeah. I mean like I, I'm kind I'm coming off of like the original, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm just in general, right? Like as I think about you know, us, right? People like us, entrepreneurs, legacy builders, people trying to do things, trying to build things, and it all you know. The cycle of self-sabotage, right? When we think about trauma bonding and, and um, the, the previous piece about what was happening with Quavo and Offset as well, but like off of that, right? It seems like there are more uh, stories of failure than there are than st of stories of success. And I think about, you know, how negativity attracts negativity which is where the whole notion of trauma bonding comes from two people going through something it seems like they always seem to find each other and they find comfort in each other's trauma um, versus you know facing whatever is, is causing the turmoil inside or whatever did you know d doing the work like you guys talked about but like when i think about what actually stops us from doing that work uh, I think about a sense of self, a sense of value, a sense of like worth, self worth, and how we actually truly feel about ourselves, right? When the lights are off, when it's just us in the mirror, um, just you alone by yourself with your thoughts, like how do you really feel about yourself? Do you, is the person you portray online really who you are, right? Or is it something else? Do you even believe in what you're trying to do? And maybe the lack of that belief is what leads you to not seeing success. It leads you to the areas of self-sabotage. I think that we have to get to the point where we recognize that the struggle isn't always normal. And I feel as though, especially as black men, like we go through things like, hey, this is just part of the process. When in actuality, it may not be part of the process. Maybe we just need to ask someone who's doing well for that support before we get to that point where we're thinking to ourselves, like, hey, man, like, I'm going through it. It's just me. This is not it. And, you know, you go down that rabbit hole, that cycle where you lead to trauma bonding and you find like minded individuals who are also stuck in that rabbit hole. because They think it's normal when it's not. Um, and it's part of that's just from experience, but just also just seeing how uh, groups of people interact in the workplace. Um, like minded individuals always seem to find each other. And when you break it down, sometimes just something simple as, hey, you're not the only one that went through this issue like let's let me show you how to get to the next step so you can then see the light at the end of the tunnel but i definitely think we maybe not glorify but we accept that it's life is hard and we have to go through this challenge um i don't know necessarily whether or not we devalue ourselves um because you know we can think highly of ourselves but i think sometimes our actions speak louder than what we're thinking so I like that. Our actions speak louder than what we are thinking. That may be the quote for today. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Let me write that down. <laughs> no, I was about to just let him rock. I said, he is about to take us I like out that. of here. <laughs> right. What is the quote? The actions speak louder than what we're thinking. But I agree with Stanley. Um, you know, I think that uh, I was just waiting on a tear. I was like, please do it. Do it. That's a million views right there. Well, take us out of here, Stan. Get us. Right. I mean, let me say that for the therapy sessions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I agree with Stanley. He, um, I, I believe that a lot of times, um, sometimes I think that people, especially in the celebrity status, uh, get to a certain point before they're ready. Right. And when I say ready, it don't necessarily mean that like their skill set is not ready for that level of publicity or a skill set or whatever the case may be, but it's them internally is not ready for, uh, what the world has. So, you know, being a celebrity, you're out in, in the, the limelight, you have a lot of people knowing you, business opportunities, but there's a difference between, hey, these things are happening and you being able to handle it internally. And so mm. having that understanding of, 
hey, am I ready to receive this abundance, right? Because abundance can come before you're ready to receive it. And then that's where the self-sabotaging coming in, right? Because you don't, you're self-sabotaging because you don't even realize what you walking into sometimes. You're self-sabotaging because you're not ready to, to have those positive conversations with yourself because you're still stuck on the negative. So those uh, are, in my opinion, can be reasons of why people are not fully valuing themselves is sometimes you got to take a pause and just say, hey, check, let me check in with myself. Let me, let me make sure that I'm ready for what's next. Um, and having those mental check-ins with yourself. And I feel like even as a person, it doesn't matter if you're a celebrity, if you are a nine to five, if you're an entrepreneur, just people, you need to check in with yourself. You check in with your spouse. You don't check in with everybody else but yourself. <laughs> so I want to ask Jordan, you know, like in terms of what Denisha is just saying about that personal check in and that that moment to have that self reflection. Like, what what role does fear play in that? Right when it comes to not, you know, the aversion to that self check in. That is one of the things that that's why people are scared to be alone, alone with themselves, alone with their thoughts, that check in. Uh, and that's that's one of the things like mindfulness and meditation, I think, are a part of that practice, like internal reflection, internal exploration of kind of finding out you the way that you think the person that you are as an individual and being taking that quiet time for some people may be too much whether they're finding different corners of themselves that they may not like or you know again especially kind of maybe to, to stan's point like culturally like we as, as as black people there is a lot of trauma that is generally baked into the culture like it is there are things that are unavoidable as far as you know to what we to what extent we could know like how much it affects like our mindset the way we think our everyday life and just exploring those just as like you know take a, a a pick a street in baltimore to to go walk around like not all of them are great streets you know and so that same thing is you exploring your own neighborhood your own internal city and so some of those places people just frequent i love going downtown to fells point i love going to the inner harbor but Man, I don't like going over the west side. Man, you better be more careful where you're walking on Charles Street. Like, those are the kind of things that when you're reflecting with yourself, you have to explore a lot of those areas because those unexplored areas, those places that you don't know, are many times where there are places where you're receiving that trauma from. You know, things that came with your upbringing, things that came with uh, experience or emotional experiences that you really have to unpack and a lot of people don't do therapy you know and and the therapy is really exploring with somebody else like a tour guide who can take you around the city and it's like and point out things like oh yeah you see that spot and you see this spot over here and because people uh what is that they have the same recurring thoughts over and over that's again you staying in the same part of the city that you you know you you frequent and you're familiar with but not exploring those other places, that's where that fear part comes in. Whether it be you're not familiar with the area or you don't like what you're seeing, so you want to get away from it as quickly and as, 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 uh, as fast as you can. So I think that that is a, a, is a very big part is fear. I mean, I, I think we're fear-based beings. You know, it's either a lot more people, I would imagine, are motivated by fear uh, than, um, you know, enticed by some incentive. You know, so it's it's carrot and stick, and more people are gonna move from the stick. Mm -hmm. So, you so for you, it's like a fight or flight. Very, very much so. Mm. No, I think I think that's real, right? And 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 uh, I think the other piece of it is we we look for ways to pacify ourselves, right? Because it's it's easier, right? I, I, I said it. I said it before. Like I, um, people don't want to suffer. But I think in in running away from the thing that you should face, it actually causes you to suffer and go through that turmoil and those ordeals like longer term, right? And we we all probably have people, friends, family members, 
or what have you, you know, acquaintances, people we knew at the job who just seemed different all of a sudden, who turned to different ways to cope. You know, people, some people start working out a lot. Some people start eating crazy. Some people start turning, turning to the bottle, right? Turning to different things, start drink, sipping a little bit of the douce. I don't know. <laughs> but in doing that, right, you, you, you kind of, uh, you enter a whole new world of problems, right? And I, when I think about the reasons that we can't get ahead, you know, we they say they say like the graveyard is like the richest place in the world, right? Because it's full of all these untapped ideas, full of so much promise. And we just give it away daily because we succumb to the things that are the just the most easiest to do and get into and have access to. But also it's like the worst for us, right? We turn to the stuff that we know is not going to be fruitful, and instead, right, uh, it, it just leads us down these these roads, you know, where you, you really got to watch yourself. You got to watch the person you're turning into and, and, you know, really say goodbye to the things you're turning away from, which is prolonged success. <laughs>